Hello, this is the second in a series of recordings on fractional factorials. So before watching this particular video, you should have read the notes on fractional factorial designs part one, fractional factorial designs part two, and have watched the first video. So what we're going to do in this section, we're going to continue on with the discussion we had at the end of the first video. And that is we talked about generating smaller fractions. That is fractions greater than a half. So I'm going to illustrate all of the concepts with an actual case study. So this is a published uh, case study, an experiment. And this experiment is a 2 to the 6th minus 3. This is a manufacturing process in which they apply a coating to these metal parts. And there are six experimental factors, belt speed, tube width. This all has to do with uh, the painting operation. So a tube would be a tube holding the paint, a pump pressure that is pumping the uh, paint through the system, viscosity of the paint. Tube height is how far above the part the tube dispenser is. And then heating temperature is the temperature of the parts as they're being painted. Okay, So a full 2 to the 6th would be 64 trials. As I said, that's a ridiculous number of trials. So for whatever reason, the experimenters have decided to go with an eighth, a 2 to the 6th minus 3. This design was not created in jump, so I actually don't know what the aliases are. So what I'm going to do is use the same trick I showed earlier in using the fit model platform to figure out what the aliases are. So you can see the design on slide 3. A 2 to the 6th minus 3 has 8 runs. And they added 3 center points, so we have replication and we can do lack of fit testing. So what I'm going to do at this point is switch over to jump. And I'll talk through the remainder of the design through the use of jump. So first I'm going to go to fit model. Okay. And I want to figure out what, what is aliased. Since I only have eight runs out of uh, for six factors, the most this design could be is a resolution three. That is a two to the sixth minus three if it's designed correctly, would be resolution three. So main effects in two-way interactions are all I'm concerned with. With that fewer number of runs, uh, thinking about three ways would be just out of the question. So once again, I'll highlight the select columns window, my six factors, and under macros, factorial to degree set to two. Thickness is the response. So I run my analysis. And notice the singularity details. Every main effect is aliased with two two-way interactions. There is one alias chain. That's what we often call these uh, combinations of aliases. We call each one a chain. There is one that involves only two-way interactions. So as I did before, what I'm going to simply do is pick all the aliases on the left-hand side, the six main effects and the AAC interaction. For any chain, it actually doesn't matter which term I pick, because they are truly equal. But by convention, we typically go with the lowest order terms and usually in alphabetical order. So I'm going to set this aside for now. Actually, I'm going to just close these windows. They really, we really don't need them at this point. Okay. 
And I'm just going to set it aside for now because I'm, I want to reference the alias chains later on. So I'm going to go back to fit model. And from looking at the aliases, I can put in my six main effects. Plus, I could add the AC interaction. So I'm going to highlight A and C and cross them. And the response is thickness. OK. So notice when we take a look at the actual by predicted plot, if you take an average of the center points, they fall right in line with the factorial points. So there's no real evidence that there's lack of fit. And in fact, if you go down to the lack of fit test, you'll see there's just no evidence of curvature whatsoever. So it doesn't appear we have lack of fit issues. Now notice the AC interaction has a very, very small effect. So we could actually remove that interaction. And the reason being is if AC is not significant, and I'll just bring this back, then I can just cross off the whole row. In other words, AC, B, E, and DF can be discounted. They don't exist. So I'm going to go highlight in the effect summary window. I'm going to highlight AC and click remove. This is a neat way that you can reduce a model uh, in jump without having to go back to the fit model dialog and regenerate the design. I'm going to remove it. And then we look at the remaining effects. Now you might be tempted to look at E and F and want to remove them. But could E and F be aliased with some of the main effects A, B, and C, which appear to be significant? They have very big effects. Let's bring our alias table over. So let's take a look at E. <coughs> what is E aliased with? Well, notice E is aliased with the interaction AD. And notice the p-value for D is actually pretty small. So it is possible that an AD interaction could exist. Also take a look at A. Okay. Notice A is aliased with the BF interaction and the DE. So once again, we have the possibility that A could be BF or it could be DE. And we have the possibility E could be AD. This is what we mean by aliasing. So I really can't take E out of the model, even though I'd like to. Because E might be an interaction of A and D. Likewise, it's entirely possible that A is an interaction of DE. So once again, uh, using the heredity principle, I can't really remove E. Well, what about F? Notice F is aliased with the AB interaction. Okay. So if I take a look at A, again, A is an interaction of BF. Okay. So that's a possibility. And let's take a look at B. B could be the AF interaction. So again, F could be in an interaction. So again, I can't really remove E or F because it's possible that there are interactions involving um, either E and F or that they're aliased with interactions um, you know, involving A or B or C. This is the problem with resolution three designs. We are often stuck. We just can't figure out what's, real, what's causing the real effect on the response okay, and what is not. So at this point, I'm stuck. 
Uh, what I really need to do is more experimentation. This is actually a very common problem with Resolution 3 designs and why I don't like to use them. So even though you'd be tempted to drop ENF, you really cannot because those could be interactions themselves or A or B could be actually be interactions involving ENF. So we're going to set this aside for now because there's not much I can really do at this point. We'll come back to it in a little bit. So right now I'm going to go back to the notes okay, and I'm going to move forward. So the notes completely discuss the issue of the aliases. And I'm going to mention what do we do to try to resolve aliases. In other words, sometimes with fractional factorials, there are ways we can try to resolve them. As you just saw with the 2 to the 6th minus 3, which is resolution 3, we hit a dead end. We really just don't know what is active and what is inactive. And the term active is becoming popular. And basically, any factor that is said to be active means that it's either active or important by itself or as part of an interaction. So if I said factor D is active, that means at D by itself has an important effect on the response or it's involved in important interactions. Something that is inactive, it has no effect on the response either by itself or in an interaction. Okay. So how do we sort out interactions? And again, I want to be clear, uh, when you have aliasing, especially resolution 3, you're often stuck. In fact, that's why I don't like the designs. You're better off to just simply do a bigger experiment because you're almost guaranteed you're going to have to do more experimenting. So one of the things that you could do, if it's possible to remove some of the main effects, then you can get rid of some of the aliases, because if a main effect is not active, then neither are any interactions involving a main effect. Okay. And this is something that we kind of use the term projective property. It's a nice property of uh, 2 to the k minus p fractions. That is, if you can remove main effects, eventually these designs will project to full factorials. To give you an example, a 2 to the fourth minus 1. So I have factors a, b, and c, and d. I take a half fraction, it's resolution 4, and then suppose I discover I can eliminate main effect D. What I now have is a 2 to the third in factors A, B, and C. Okay. So this is what we mean by these fractional factorials, and I need to use the word can sometimes project the full factorials and get rid of the aliasing if we're lucky enough that we can uh, find a way to start eliminating main effects. So here's the example on slide 11. The 2 to the 4th minus 1. Okay, so it has 8 runs. And then, as I said, I eliminate factor D. This is now a full 2 to the 3 factorial. I've gotten rid of the aliasing. And then finally, there's a principle that you will see used, and we've actually uh, used it ourselves, called effect heredity. Okay. This is a principle from a couple of people named Jeff Wu, and I don't really, Michael Hamada, I believe. They wrote a book on design of experiments and proposed the idea. And their idea is if a two-way interaction is active, okay, say AB, then either one or both of the main effects must also be active. You have to be careful because this rule does not always hold. In other words, you can have an interaction 
which masks the effect of both A by itself and B by itself. But this is generally put forth as a guiding principle. So this is a way that you can break aliases. I caution people. This is not a theorem. Okay, this is not even a rule. It's a guideline only. Be careful in the use of it. So to give you an example of what's meant by using the effect heredity principle to break aliases, suppose I have a 2 to the 4th minus 1. It's resolution 4. Resolution 4 means two-way interactions are aliased with other two-way interactions. The four factors, okay, this is a tool life experiment, cutting speed, cutting angle, applied pressure, and a flow variable. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide and look at the singularity details. Again, it's resolution four, so each two-way is aliased with another two-way. And then you look to the right. This is the analysis. We see the fit model report. Notice that flow and pressure have a small effect, okay. very small effect. So in the model, notice I have two two-way interactions, speed by flow and speed by angle. But if you look up above, speed by flow okay, is aliased with angle by pressure. Well, pressure has a small effect, but angle has a big effect. Okay. So it turns out I could be looking at a speed by flow interaction or an angle by pressure interaction. I cannot separate them. I don't know which is which. Well, how about the other interaction, speed by angle? Notice speed by angle is aliased with pressure by flow. Well, the effect heredity principle says if the pressure by flow interaction is active, then one of the two main effects must also be active. Well, notice neither pressure or flow appear to be active, so I can cross it off. I have now resolved that the speed angle interaction is what is present. Okay. But I still have a problem. I cannot separate speed by flow from angle by pressure. So I most likely would have to do additional experimentation to try to break the alias.